So Ruby walks into a cafe. She sits there and she orders a cappuccino. We a, find out Ruby is a cappuccino oats, lover. With oats. She sits there. She's a yep. woman. Could this woman be her mother? Yes. Yes is the answer. Right? Yes. Turns out it is her mother. Yes. They cry. They hug. They hug. Meanwhile, the poor fucking barista, all I can think about is he's just waiting there with a coffee in his hand saying, Ruby. What's going Ruby, on? Ruby, your coffee's here. What's Stop going on? Stop hugging this woman. I have a coffee for you. That's all I could think about. Do you ever give fake names at the coffee shop? I do sometimes. Greg. Yeah. Like, Greg, I'm like, that's me. What's your go-to fake name? Logan. Why? Don't know. Cool. Good chat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, 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 might that, start, I might start going Russell with mine. Yeah. RTD, please. Empire of Death, baby. Two. Oh. Season finale. Well, we're, we're a whole a whole season into this new era now. Crazy times, mate. Crazy times. How are we feeling? How are we doing? Welcome back to another episode of the podcast, folks. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's the end. But the moment has been prepared it's for. It's the last one. It's mm. the last last one of us sitting here reviewing an episode of Doki Who. Yeah, I forgot to get champagne. I was going to get champagne so that we could have a little celebratory. Like a dot. I thought that was for dot and bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> so much humor. <laughs> uh, we're going to be reviewing, breaking down, getting into our instant hot take reactions. Break it down. Of Empire of Death. Break it down, y'all. Break it down. <laughs> Break it down, y'all. Were you excited going in? No. What do you think I think of the episode? Because we were you, talking, I, I said I don't have a read on you off air. I couldn't tell if you liked I, it. Or I didn't. don't think you liked it. I mean, I think you were fairly, you, you were like, you were, uh, and th- there's nothing wrong with this. You were, you know, I don't think you were really, um, you know, normally you're a bit more talky in the, during the episode. Oh, was I pretty quiet? I yeah. thought I was actually a bit too talkative, to be honest. No, no I, okay. I didn't get that read. All right. Maybe in the first like 10 minutes. I think you liked it. We make jokes about the things. What me? I think you liked I think, it. I think I think you just. I think I think this whole file just didn't work for you. Well, uh, let's find out. Uh, with the Fifty Doctor Who podcast, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Fifty Doctor, uh, TikTok at Fifty Doctor Who. Who. Subscribe if, if you, you haven't, haven't already. already. Follow us everywhere, baby. Uh, let's go. Let's get into talking about a brand new episode of Doctor Who. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50%. I'm back. Empire of Death. The Doctor has lost. His Aegis enemy reigns supreme and a shadow is falling over creation. Nothing can stop the devastation except perhaps a one woman <laughs> and a spoon. And a spoon. <laughs> um, all right, let's. Uh, you jump first. I want I want you to go first. Let's go just like general couple sentences. How are you feeling about the big finale of Doctor Who season one? I think like, I think it in places really did like fall flat on its face, particularly I think with Sutek. Mm. I think it was also like, I think there was a lot of scenes where it seemed like we were just doing the same thing over and over again, like mentioning that everything's dying, everything's gone mm. and the whole Ruby mum thing again and again and again. It kind of felt like we were going in circles. And I think... For a final, it definitely wasn't afraid to give you kind of like long scenes where not much is happening other than characters just talking, mm-hmm. which I do appreciate. I think it's definitely a slower final. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the biggest problem with it is that, yeah, I just think the whole, it could, I think it could have been done in like a really cool way. I think they kind of missed the mark a little bit. Um but for some reason, I really enjoyed it. I think because I think I really liked it because it was a different pace of a final for me. Mm. I don't know. Am I nuts? I feel like this was. Um, I feel like this was definitely. This is. I'll look at this two part final in my head as like a bit of a slow burn almost, mm-hmm. with with an ending that has. You know, it, it it's nothing really huge in a sense that ruby's mom is nobody and i kind of like that as well and i think their ending was was really sweet and um yeah i i'd say i say i liked it i um i think it i think for a final it's definitely interesting Mm. what about you i loved it really nope (laughs) oh i believed you for a second (laughs) i got you i actually believed you uh no this was bad this was bad 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 but um last 10 minutes loved love 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 the last 10 minutes so what's this last week all over again groundhog day i guess yeah well welcome back aiden crane i think um (laughs) the uh the ending ruby's plot at the end i think was amazing i think it was the right decision yeah Um, totally and, and even if like going for a random character would never live up to the hype as well um, and I just think this was like a nicer character. Be and I and I love the idea of Ruby finally, spoiler alert, going to actually spend time with her mum, get to know her mum, and that that that's just life pulling these characters that's away. That's the adventure. 
That's the adventure. It's bigger than Space Babies. I think it's really real and raw that they, they've just not grown apart, but life circumstances have pulled them apart. I really love that. Mm. Um, Shoot is brilliant throughout the whole thing. That moved me a few times. The, the moment where he screamed into the over Earth, I thought was amazing. Like I felt my, my cheeks go all tingly, which means maybe if I was drunk, I might have cried. Mm. Um, so I thought that was great. Um, Ruby, I felt maybe didn't have again that much to do until towards the end. Um, Mel had nothing to do. Rose had, I think, one line. The yeah. St- I think she generally did like have one or two. The stakes for me get immediately destroyed two minutes into the episode. The moment you kill off everyone, you just go, oh, well, this is just bollocks because they're just going to reverse it in 45 minutes time. It was, and it was almost so on the nose with it being like the blip from Marvel. Yeah, yeah. No, it was was so on the nose. It was stupid, but. (laughs) It was so on the nose. I am mad. I'm I'm like, uh, I think I've maybe come to terms with the fact that the direction of this area isn't necessarily something i love um i what think do you, what do you think that direction is um i think it's it's i love fun i like when doctor who's fun but i like when that fun is also grounded in like real emotion which we got at the very end of the episode but i think for me and and i'm not the first person to say this the doctor and ruby's relationship just doesn't do it for me i, I think it, it could be amazing and it has so much potential i think millie is great I think Shooty's great. I think the Doctor and Ruby are great. But I think, like, where's your conflict? Like, where's your flaws mm. for your characters? The, the, I was thinking about this on the way to work yesterday. The whole way through, I'm like, I actually don't know what the flaw of this Doctor is, what the flaw of Ruby is. Because Russell at the moment is writing everyone like the best of humanity sort of thing. Like, like Carla, she's just the perfect mum. Like, uh, I, and I, I don't believe it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, totally. I, I completely, I think that like that ending scene where they say goodbye, though emotional, I think really made me just see fully that I don't really feel that we've even had a chance really to feel the <laughs> emotion between these two characters. I think we got close in Boom where they were generally working together. Yeah, that was that, the closest. There's it, that series like, I forbid this Ruby. Exactly. And that's it. Like, I don't think they ever had a conflict in, ever again. In Boone, there was a tiny bit of conflict. Like when, when Ruby like, yeah, goes against him and she's yeah. like, no, well, you're, she quotes Clara or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She acts like Clara. Yeah. But they have that conflict none of that. where, yeah, the daughter's like, I forbid this. And, um, you know, she decides to do something that would, it, there's a probability of dying, but it will save the doctor and then there's a conflict. Mm. Yeah. But I feel like from there onwards, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the the performances, but I feel like if these it, it's the characters who I I don't know if I can really get around. I had a good time in the episode, but I definitely think I just totally went like Jello brain mode, where I'm yeah. just going to be stimulated by I was, CGI sand. I was very bored for a lot. I had a feeling you were going to a feel lot a of bored. it. I think it, I think it is quite it's quite slow, isn't it? But like I love slow burn. Like my I favorite know, movies yeah, are slow burn. Me too. But I, I, I think, think they just kept going in circles. Though am I not? They kept like, going in circles. It's and just it, like the same shit. And I think it was like long, ca- no, long dialogue scenes, but not necessarily like character focused. Yeah, it, nothing's really happening it either. Was, like I like slow burn stuff when when it's like a slice of life. Like you're you're diving into characters and and the best slow burn Doctor Who episodes really play into that. Um, Whereas this, I think, was slow burn, yet it just didn't really do much. And I just, I think it was pretty much a carbon copy of the season three final, I thought. Right. Um, where, like, part one's, like, really good, builds up so much momentum, amazing cliffhanger, the world ends at the end, and then part two is, like, a more slow burn, definitely not as good as part one, the climax is really fucking silly, um, and then everything gets reversed, what, the dots of and Jesus. then the Doctor and Ruby just decide to go their own ways. Which is like Doctor and Martha, you know, slightly different circumstances. You can if pull that apart if you like, but it's very, very similar. If I was doing this, I, I think this episode could have. I've been thinking about this a lot. I think this episode could have done like a really cool, like you know how like um, in Deathly Hallows when they're looking for the Horcruxes, mm. and you can see like through the characters, like it's starting to affect them. Yeah, they've been traveling for months. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think it's like a year at least, and like they're they're struggling and they're starting to like turn on each other, yeah. like, you know, Ron Leeson, for example. Notoriously I, my favourite Harry Potter film as well. Well, there you go. Or second favourite, Azkaban's pretty good. I think this could have been, like, we could have really seen, like, the effect it had on the characters, but I didn't yeah. feel that at all. And yeah. also, 
I think the characters, they just look too clean mm. and glossy. Mm. Like, I would have loved to have seen, like, I would love to have seen them go through the motions and months pass by and then yeah. they're dealing with the fact that the doctor is the doctor has lost apparently. He's he's never lost like this before. Yeah. But Shudi is so gorgeous and beautiful and he has his makeup on and uh, yeah. and he doesn't look I just don't believe anything in rugged and Ruby like Millie Gibson's a very beautiful woman and Shudi mm. Gat was a very beautiful man and they look stunning and they even in their worst um time in their life they also look stunning. Yeah. When I would have loved to have seen like rugged shit. I really thought this episode was going to be like a chase through time. Like I thought they were going to be like, Sue takes always one step ahead and they're trying to like trick him. And I I thought it was going to be like, you know, that into the vortex scene. I love that quote and that, and the the angle they did, the direction was great. Mm. And I'm like, but what's the, uh, what's the emotion here? Uh, Sue take is, um, and I know this might be a stupid thing to bring up, but like I was so taken out the episode where like I use those bungees at work. And they're for strapping down like little bits of timber mm. and it barely does that. <laughs> I know that's a weird thing to say, but it, it's just this tiny little thing. Well, now they've got that dog on them and it's carrying, it would, it would snap instantly. Mm. Well, it's okay. It's it fine. would snap instantly. It's fine. It's not fine. It's got a big it's dog in it fine. though. Big fucking dog, mate. A lot, ah. of, lot of big dog. What do you think of Sutek? I think Sutek was completely wasted. <laughs> I think I rewatched, um, uh, well, not real. I watched Empire up. Um, um, what the fuck? Something Mars. Pyramids, Pyramids of, Mars. of Mars. Yeah. I rewatched that yesterday. I I generally think I didn't have to. Yeah. No. Nothing really. I didn't feel like rewarded for watching it. No. Um, I think he had the potential to be such a great standout villain, mm. and instead, it's just convoluted, and it ends with him being on a leash, and it's just such like dumb. It's, it's so such, dumb. It's such plot armor. It's like. If you bring death, yeah, then to, you bring life. Bring it's death like, to death. I bring, and, it's, and I'm like, does this? Shitty deserves better, man. This, like, like it, it really it does. Generally, I'm generally like, I'm just jelly brained. I'm like, yeah, no, bro. I'm like, it makes yeah, no fucking jello sense. brain. This is great. No, yeah, it's so dumb. Yeah, woo. Does it make sense? This is like, no. I know you hate. You're gonna actually hate me for saying this. You hate Marvel, and I seriously think this just feels like fucking Marvel Doctor Who. Yeah, it kind of does. And it sucks. It's like, <laughs> like it, it's the whole like unit tower thing. Yeah. And by the way, I, I I I should retract that comment a little bit because I I loved Marvel for reasons that I think we all did at some point. Yeah. Because we felt I, like I the like characters the were day. there. And then it just became Almost like a parody of itself. Which is what I feel like this is. And I think, yeah, I, uh, it was so on the nose with the 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 fade and, and And so what? I don't know what they were trying to go for with the whole Roger at William thing. It it was so convoluted. Yeah. And he Let landed 73 the, yards be its own thing. Yes, dude. I, Please. I was so worried <laughs> we they don't were going to do there. something <laughs> to change something that made that episode so special yeah which i don't think they did i couldn't tell you mm-hmm. i know there's always people in the comments like how could you possibly not get it well i didn't okay <laughs> fuckhead sorry <laughs> looking at you yeah. mr halfway typing sorry. a comment right now i wake up at the crack of fucking dawn to watch it okay yeah i'm tired i didn't get it mm. and they go to like i keep thinking i'm like it, it's like you know how um sorry i, I know i'm talking quite a lot i'll right. just say this last point um, uh, in in Big Bang and Pandora, Pandora opens Big Bang. All right, Big Bang. Mm. It was kind of remind me like it has the same color palette when they're in the museum. Mm. Same with this episode where they go to the fucking archive. Big Bang. You feel the energy. You feel it's mm. exciting. It's fun. This I just felt just boring. Was just, it was just flat. It was flat as a bloody it pancake, man. Flat. Mate. I gave so little shits. I'm sort of jello brain though. Because I sort of enjoyed it. Yeah, that's fine. But I think it was like, I think it took way too long to get going. When it did get going, it was convoluted and quite frankly, just uninteresting. Mm. And Sutek, you know, we all kind of bash on Pyramids of Mars with Sutek just sitting in a chair for 95% of the time going, I am Sutek. He did mm. the same thing here. He did. He just sat on the TARDIS. It became his altar, as he said. Oh, and What's also, the point of being alive? Me right I, now. Sorry, I just said I would stop talking, but. I just think it's so silly, this whole, like, I hate when they try to, like, there's so many things where it's like, and now 
Sutek was there the whole time. Yeah. Oh. And it's like, what? Now what? Like, it's how so, many things are there that have been there the whole damn it's time? Dumb, dude. Like, I wouldn't mind it if it was like it jumped on in Wobble Yonder or something like that. Because that I, makes but that's, sense. But that's but what it, I thought. It's like, so now for some reason, and it's just like a dumb line. Like, it, it doesn't have to be that way. No, and I now totally it's like, agree. it's been 40 years in the making or some shit. No, but that's just silly. It's dumb. I thought that I thought it was Wobble Yonder because that's when the TARDIS starts acting up. Yeah. Hey. Um, yeah. I liked the uh, the the reasoning for Susan Trier being through time. I liked that she was almost like uh, she was the the gift of death in a way, mm. spent placed through time by Sutek. I thought that was a, a good twist. But if that's the case, how come they'd never seen her before? Until she just hit him, mate. Yeah, but she's not because they keep running into her. Is, is this like the Kara Oswald thing? Like, why did the Doctor yeah. not see Kara Oswald before that? Exactly. Yeah, before it's just shit seven. like this where it's like it's just kind of silly, and I feel like. Russell of all people knows like how much fans get funny about this kind of thing. Mm. Like fans f- don't f- won't forget this. They're like, mm. "Oh, Sutek was there the whole time," mm. but it's just silly. It doesn't it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it, I think they just completely wasted Sutek. Me looking at the showrunners next. What do you mean? <laughs> when I see Russell next, Why? let's just get to the next era. <laughs> let's just skip this one. I'm kidding. Well, it could be, but I'm also. Not <laughs> kind of not like <laughs> yeah. Talk, talk. Tell us how you're feeling. I just thought this was lame as shit, man. Like yeah. as much as I love Doctor Who being silly, like I like I like Space Babies. It was fun, mm. but when you get to these finales and when you you bring the stakes up as high as they did two minutes into this episode, you've got to you can't end it with tying a dog to a leash, hanging him out the fucking TARDIS and dragging him through the time vortex. What's that? Like what? I don't. It just baffles me, man, these decisions. I think it's dumb. I think this is the dumbest script I've ever fucking heard. Really? Well, no, that's an exaggeration, but but it's, it's pretty dumb, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, yeah. I don't know what to say about it, to be honest. Like, I, 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 think, I think the ending's great. Not the dog ending, but the Ruby ending is awesome. I, I love that. It, that I was think, character work that I've been fucking crying out for. This series, I think it just really struggled with like its low episodes. Um, it just lost me, man. It had no, it didn't have time to really do anything. Shooty was barely fucking there for two episodes. Mm. Um, I feel like that, that's two whole episodes where we don't have um, scenes with the Doctor and their companion. Yeah. Like, I am... Um, I feel like making chemistry together. I don't know. I've just watched this series unravel. Like the first four episodes, I was like on board with and take some episodes slightly worse than others. Uh, but a lot of really good stuff in there. And even things like the devil's cord um, and space babies, which aren't the best of the litter. I still think like I enjoyed, but then I just feel like from halfway through, I, I just felt like I could just feel the, the rails What's the word? Like the going off the rails a little bit and like mm. the seams coming undone with it where it just, you just start to be like, oh no, we're actually not going to get that great character work. And as much as you can throw, and these kind of lines really annoy me where you have a line from Shooty at the end where he says, you taught me to talk about family in a way that I never have done before. I'm like, that, great. If that was actually a character work that we'd seen on Ravel throughout the, throughout the series. But I don't think we have. Like I, I know he spoke about Susan once in the devil's cord mm. he then spoke about susan when the plot was convenient at the start of last week i don't buy that hey and another thing that like i just kind of chuckled in my head was when um mrs flood and 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 um cherry. and cherry they were hugging and cheering like sylvia and wolf mm. and you just can't help but sit there and go like no like this is not the same these characters are nowhere near as good and and cherry's funny but imagine if we'd had a beautiful scene with Cherry, where Cherry and Ruby had sat down at some point early in the finale for like two or three minutes, um, or even in 73 yards or something. I, I think there is something there in the Church of Ruby Road, but I obviously wasn't that memorable. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, there's none of that. These characters are not built up. They're hollow as shit, man. It's funny because like when we were going through Chibnall's era, we, not just us, like people, fans would constantly say like, it's just like, I don't feel like this is how, like, it, it's not how Russell would like do characters. Mm. I think Russell was so good at characters in RGD1. And I think Stephen was really good at like his stories. Mm. I think character work was always Russell's, um, like, mm. 
it was always his. It was always his. Like I think Moff's got a good knack for it as well. I, I think uh, he not as good. He didn't build up that outer world. Yes, as well not as, as good. Did. Yeah. I think, but it's just funny now that it seems like the fundamentals that he's going for are just a bit whack and out of sync. Yeah, and I I don't I don't know if it's I don't know if it's maybe producers not not being able to say no to him. I don't know if it's. Uh, Maybe a bit of ego it being on Disney Plus. I don't, I, know. I don't uh, know. I think that it's just starting to. Yeah, let's just. It, I yeah. don't know. It's unraveled a little bit. Let, let's try and like uh, talk about the episode a bit. Know. Hey, um, so I don't, know. I, don't, I don't know. I really like the the acolytes. I thought they were cool. I think it would have been awesome to have played with them a bit more and maybe to have seen them if we'd had gone down like the chase through time route or something. I think they're like a really ominous figure, being like their monk fit. They look what spooky. Was that? I don't know. They were cool. And I like the look of like the, um, almost like the sunburnt earth. Like whenever they were in unit tower at the end, it yeah. had that yellow tint with dust everywhere. That's what kind of reminded me of Big Bang, you know, when they're yeah, going sure. through the um, National History Museum, whatever in London. Yeah. I think that looked really nice. Um, and yeah, so so immediately we pick up where we left off. Mel and Doctor on the Vespa. Cool sequence. We've seen it before on the socials. Um, and that was about as action packed as this episode got. Yeah. Um, and then we, yeah. So that's like a, a cool scene. Kate goes to die, and, and as they start to kill Kate, I'm going, oh no. And and for a second, I I sort of do feel myself get a little bit like, oh my god, they're gonna kill Kate. It's gonna be epic, or, or emotional. And the moment everyone else starts dying, instantly I'm like, oh no, she's she's gonna be back. <laughs> like, there's no fucking way. Uh, and then it's just like. Where do we go from there? That they go back to Unit HQ. They go into the memory tiles. Go back to the volume, called. and then into the memory tiles. The volume, yeah. Actually, it was a set. It, well, yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> the memory tiles felt a bit cramped. It, yeah. I don't know. Did what did you think? I, I feel like it felt bigger in tales. I of think the it was bigger. Yeah, this felt just not magical. I don't know. It had a magical vibe I to like, it. In, in yeah, I like the, the memory, I like memory tiles. I think it kind of worked for me maybe a bit more than you. I think we spent a little bit too much time in there, and yeah. Again, I think the the I'm supposed to be feeling the emotion, and I know how people hate it when they go like six months later. Yeah. But I would have really loved to have seen like it really impact them again. I'm 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 talking like definitely how it's part one where you can mm. really see the effect of them going after like the Horcruxes and stuff. I really thought that's what they were going to go for in this episode. Yeah. Um, but again, I think unfortunately, like even just, it just takes me to the episode when like, you know, Shooty's like shirt gets a little bit, a little bit messy. <laughs> Yet in the, in the, in the final scene in unit, when he's wearing the leather jacket, again, it's just all clean again. Hot damn. And I'm like, it just, for me, it's like, I would have loved to have seen, it's just little stuff like that for me. I don't know. I just would have liked to have seen them look, a bit tattered and they look stunning and beautiful because they're the TARDIS team and they're supposed to look hot. Sure. Um, Mel finds a little bow, which I thought was cute from the classic era and they remembered TARDIS. Oh, they, they use the- She um, finds Colin's jo- uh, coat as well. Yeah, they use the um, the 60th Sonic Yeah, that's well. in there. That's cool. I like that. Sure. Nah. <laughs> they use the scarf. Uh, yeah, th- there's like heaps of little Easter eggs in there, which is nice and fun. Um, it's funny because they do the whole like oh um they do the whole speaking and ropes thing you know they're from the church and ruby road yeah which was that just like a but it's just like reference <sighs> like i don't i don't know why i'm we did more that. i'm more referring to like there was like a quick scene where trudy was like what well, the doctor was like and that's the day i met you and i'm like i don't really like I give a shit. i'm like okay oh i don't fuck. really feel the oh okay two things a just very quick backtrack for two seconds Please. The cheer I let out when the Vlinks died. No. Because I thought everyone so else was going to survive and the Vlinks was going to die, but that fucker, he's come back as well. Somehow his head popped back on. Somehow Palpatine has returned. Yeah, somehow the That's Vlinks. literally this episode. Somehow, the somehow Sutek has attached yeah. himself to the TARDIS. It's so <laughs> silly. Um, yeah, okay. So we're in the memory TARDIS. What's the second thing I was going to say? What did you say just before that? Um, uh, the, the, the Church and Rue Road. Oh, back and yeah. I just didn't okay. Anything. Here we go. Fucking the glove's back. Love the glove, Ruby. Oh, the convenient glove. The glove of convenience. And it came back at the end of the episode as well and That's helped them got. save the day. Yeah. Oh. It is just super convenient. It is. I, I know we're like jumping Ru- ahead here, but the ending is just, it's not smart. Russell tried to hide it. 
like bring about the glove with a quick bit of dialogue where it's like, and this is the day we met. But it's like, we, I can see what you're doing. You yeah. just need to bring back the glove. And then it's like, people might think it's too obvious and they'll be like, oh, the glove. I'll say something like, it's the day we met. But yeah. I saw right through your box of tricks, Russell T Davies. Um, anyways, then the doctor decides he needs a spoon. Why? I don't know. I was like, kind of just laughing. Like when, when he's like, do you have metal? And she's like, and then opens up a, a cloth and there's a spoon in there. I'm like, it, this is the lamest shit it ever. Was a, it, was a ve- it was a very long scene for something that I felt like just was really flat and didn't really have any emotion. And I didn't understand it. Mm. Again, mm. people love to tell me every week that I'm so fucking dumb oh, they'll be like, understand There is it. deep emotions in there. Well, it, maybe there is. It's symbolic for motherhood. Is it sad that a baby died? Yes, yeah, that's horrible. But I think it was trying to be like yeah. parallels to Ruby's mom. Oh, for sure they were going for something like that. I guess. I think there is uh, much better usage of that time, perhaps in this episode. I know I didn't really, I didn't really, I didn't really get that. I didn't know if they were trying to sort of set up the world and and that the world's destroyed and everyone's losing their memories or something like that. I, I didn't know if maybe that's why they did it, but I just thought we're literally just in a tent. Like I don't see the scale of this. I don't know. Yeah. I don't understand. It's just super con- the the current. I think the current around the TV thing was like super convenient, and it just it like shoved the spoon. A in spoon there. fixes it somehow and like even when they go to the to the records place like they take off the screen and they happen to just be able to plug mm. the thing in classic my um as I, soon as they showed the spoon i just went peter capaldi my spoon and this is my spoon <laughs> <laughs> the, the middle finger glove back when <laughs> doctor who was fun <laughs> what did you think of the whole mail has been dead for uh years it was nice to give bonnie langford Something to do. Because she did, like, the memory time of sequence, the amount of... And they didn't even try and hide it. Like, they kept just showing reaction sorts of Mel throughout it. and But no lines, no dialogue. She just sat there and just reacted. It was like they got into the edit and went, Russell went, oh, no, I've done what they did in the 80s. I've not given Mel anything to do. Is so not- he was like, quick, give her reaction shots, cut them in. That's the whole point though of bringing Mel back is to yeah. um, is to give her like the, you know, it's like the second coming, but mm. it's like- Two fists are fucking nothing, mate. That's all I've and got I know, her. And I know she's in series two, yeah. but we shouldn't be thinking It'll that. It'll probably be the same like, thing. Like that's 100%. what I said in the giggle. I said, oh, but she's, yeah. she's back in the finale of yeah. season and one. Now, and, now you're, and now you're saying- um, And now I feel like she had way more to do in the giggle than she did in this bloody finale. What's the- What's a Z tech? What's it called? What's a Z Dex? What's a um? Oh, a uh, uh, what's the fucking, fucking thing she flies on? A zongo? A zomp- what's a what's a zingo? A zongo? Zingo? Yeah, a I got a lift off a of zingo. <laughs> hey! hey, comedy. Can I ask a question. Go. Um. So when we're in the memory tires, though, the Roger at William. Yeah. Thing pops. I can't take. Can you? Do you know why that popped up? No. <laughs> Am I? Are we stupid? This and thick was and dumb. And I just thought, like, who cares? Like, I we, we suddenly we had to jump to 2046 or whatever it was, um, and go through all that Roger App Williams stuff because the doctor's never been there before. Is that what? The, but the doctor hasn't been to many places. No, it was something to do with. Uh, oh, bro, I don't know. I actually don't know. How dumb of you not to get it? Oh, thanks, comment section. Yeah. Ah, it and. It just felt like such a momentum killer getting there as well. Like we'd slow down in the memory TARDIS and that was cool. And then we had the monk scene. And then we had the monk slow. scene. And, and then we slow. And then we and go the here. slow is slow because the slow is the slow. <laughs> and we are slow because of the slow. That's me watching this episode. And then it's slow. Yeah. Because it's slow and slow. <laughs> and the engines are slow. <laughs> me watching this episode. It is slow. It is, uh, which doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. It's just, I think we lose stakes um, in it because we, we never, I think, get to see the scale of what happens. And and so I think uh, like- Australia again, destroyed Oh my last, God, we were the last ones. We were the last one, And it was also about to hit Perth. Like it was that, yeah. it was the Western side of Australia that was getting hit first. Yeah, so we, we were sat here just turning it. to dust. Yeah, we were just turning to dust. Yeah, we did the whole, Connor, I don't feel so good. Did, can I be honest though, just quickly, like- did, yeah. Did, was it, was anyone a upset when all these characters were dying, or b like thought they were going to stay dead? 
No, that, that's what I mean. That's why I like, instantly was turned off the episode. Does anyone real? Did they really think? Did, does Russell no. really sit there and write this and go like? And do producers read it and go, "Yeah, people will think they're dead and care." Mm. It, it's. Mm. I literally say this now. Preview pod. Um, didn't I literally fucking say this? I was like. What I don't want is like a reverse thing where the sand goes backwards and everyone comes back. <laughs> That's literally what happened. Well, and I could read into it. What you didn't predict, predict was getting suit at being flown through time yeah, with you know his, why his claws that? ripping open the time vortex. Yeah, you know why I didn't predict that? Why didn't you? Because it's fucking stupid, <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> is is it is it is it implying that the doctor? Um, and by the way, you can say I'm reading too much into this. I'm just going off what I watched, okay? Mm. Does it imply the TARDIS is flying through? The Vortex is like, it's 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 every place I ever visited. Is that what it was implying? So Sutek is like slicing the time Vortex and it's fixing everywhere he's ever traveled to. Maybe. Ever. I don't know. Because that's what I think they're saying. I think it's very a very Russell T. D. Russell T. Davies, Davies. Uh, convenient ending. As it always is, like he's not the best at ending. Season three's ending... Whilst the Archangel Network stuff is, is set up, uh, the doctor, fact that it turns the Doctor into fucking doctor, Jesus is bananas. Doctor, everyone around the world says the, do- the Doctor's name. The TARDIS suddenly becomes Jesus. flying Earth home at the end. You kind of buy it, but it's I not. I love that. Yeah, I, I, I like it a lot. but And that score. But it is kind of, Yeah, the score's great, but it is kind of bullshit at the same time. Um, but then, you, you know, you've got things like Doomsday where... Uh, the whole glasses thing is set up, and and thing, and so that I feel like that works really well. So he You're can do anything about well. the glasses. What's up? He should have stopped at season two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm kidding. That's a joke. Uh, Jeez, Aiden. I know. So, I love us. We're going through the plot though. Like, so you didn't care when Mel was possessed. No, I was I was like they're giving Bonnie Langford something, but they're not doing anything for Mel here. Oh, again, they could have done it so much better with like it could have been such an emotional beat when they're like, Oh, they finally got Mel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you feel no stakes. I hated it when they went to unit and they did the <sighs> Yeah, because then I, they go straight to unit from there? Is that basically what there's happens? There's this weird like I'm like the TARDIS can teleport people now. Oh yeah, that Harriet happens. like pulls a lever and then they go and they get like beam me up Scotty. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Star yeah. Trek. I'm like, when does the... T- and I, I get I'm being nitpicky, I suppose, with shit like that. But it's like, yeah. when does the TARDIS do that? It just does, It's mate. like a vortex manipulator. No, this, it uh, doesn't. That's not how the TARDIS works. You know this era? I'm telling you, it's not how it works. Two words for this era. One's hollow, which I've used a lot. Mm. Uh, two is convenient. Yeah, it's very um, convenient. A the, lot of convenient glove. stuff. I was saying that throughout the Star Beasts. All the time, there's really convenient stuff that happens. Maybe it's just my tradey ass brain but again that i'm like just get a like a get like a hook a hook would have been fine to smack around the tardis it's a tiny little it's like this big i think you're overthinking that because you work at it no i'm not i was fine with the, of everything that was going on no Aiden. i was fine that the robe everyone, didn't break everyone comment below if that annoyed you i guarantee you everyone will say it annoyed you yeah the, the other tradies listening will be like that fucking scene man um I don't know, man. That shit just annoys me. And it takes me out of the episode. Murray, whilst I think his score was beautiful, he went hard this episode. Like every emotional scene, he went. Do, 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 bo, bo. Like, not, like when Ruby's going with like the, the TV. I, I, yeah, but I yes. I feel like, I feel like, but again, it's just like the, I think they must have thought the emotion was there, but it wasn't, I think. Mm. And that, I think it could have been. Why, no, I, I think it 110% could have been. Mm. Again, I, I'm not trying to take my own horn, but I think it would have been, I think this episode really would have been good if uh, just they showed how much it affected them. It just, it felt like it had been like less than a day. Mm. They they looked too glistening and too shiny. Yeah, it, just didn't they, buy it. Just it didn't just, buy yeah, it. it just, it, I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't buy that it had been. However long. However long. Hey, can you tell me about the, because I, I kind of missed the line. I just heard cultural appropriation. Yeah, that was for the um, that was for the Egyptian like all the um, caskets. I assume, you know, like the Egyptian caskets, right? And and all the Egyptian like the dogs and stuff, right? I think Ruby says something along the lines of, um, "Well, what were all they for?" And then Judy said, "Like cultural appropriation." I think interesting. Okay. I think it's like a bit of a fourth wall kind of break thing. Maybe. Yeah, how Martha... Was it a joke? ...looks into the camera in uh, the end of 
Jenny sends in the TARDIS. She's like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She does, doesn't it's, she? it's like one of those things, I suppose. <laughs> Um, I don't know why this. Was, I don't. I don't know if it was, was a, joke. It a joke or a political thing. If it was, it went over my fucking. Yeah, I, I don't know. My ass. I don't know, man. Um, I think it was trying to be funny. I don't. I actually don't know. <laughs> or maybe I'm bad for thinking it was trying yeah, to be I, funny. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm naughty. What am I supposed to feel here, Russell? <laughs> Please tell me, because I feel yeah. fucking bored. Please tell me. Um, all right, two jet thrown into the fucking time vortex. How do you um, feel about that? <laughs> I feel like we know how we feel about it. We know. It's, it's so fucking it dumb, dumb, stupid, makes no fucking sense. Uh, it actually looked all right. I'll give it that. Like, I didn't... I it thought, looked better than last I week. I thought that dog in the vortex yeah, looked pretty good. I'll, I'll give it that. I really, last week, was not pleased with the idea of that. And I kind of felt bad, because I love dogs. So when, when he cut the leash, and he just went, oh! <laughs> it's just so <laughs> silly. the vortex, I thought, no, save him. Bring him back. I love that dog. It's just so dumb, because, like, the... Sutek is, like in Pyramids of Mars, he also gets like stuck in- Yeah, it's the same ending. It's the same ending. Yeah. So Russell, what exactly did you do here? And like, (laughs) and the whole reason he came back is because he had time to plan in the vortex. You don't think he's just going to do the same thing again? Yeah, in 40 years. When when Crispy's show running, Crispy will be like, this is the best season ever. Connor show runner, I think. Ah, Crispy's- By the way. Crispy's got one over you, mate. I think as well, like, so this was like, I felt so much more like, um, particularly from the toy maker, just so much more like fear. Mm. Um, this is meant to be the big baddie. This is meant to be the one who waits, which is the king of all the gods because he's the god of death. Yeah. So this is who um, the toy maker was afraid of. Um, yeah. Maestro, who yeah. was afraid of. Um, and it, it, he was the weakest of all of them. Yeah, he just got thrown out of the bloody time vortex, mate. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just, it, it's, and it, and then, it, and it just ends to like a pizza party in like unit. Yeah, and, I'm like, rush with pizza. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, it's, oh, okay. I was yeah. just like, huh, that had no emotion to it. You know, the moment they stepped out onto, on, into unit, like at the end, or they teleported to unit, I literally was like, I did not think we were here yet. I did not yeah, think we're too. at the climax of the yeah, episode. Yeah. I just I sat I there thinking, like, what the fuck? Like, I, we've not built up to anything. I didn't think it just sort of happened. Uh, and it's funny, like, there's supposed to be this emotional beat where the doctor's like, and now I bring death. Yeah, but I kept thinking, I was like, look, I get with the doctor always likes to give second chances, but it's but for fuck's sake, it's Sue Tech. Like, yeah, just he literally just destroyed the entire universe. I think you don't have to feel guilty about killing him. Yeah, he literally just. He literally did just kill the whole universe. And like, and I, I get it's the doctor's always supposed to be that person. Mm. Whatever happened to no second chances, I'm that kind of man, mm. you know? And I don't want to be that guy, but we've seen it all before. Like we, we've seen that scene a million times before. But then how do you keep, I think there are ways of doing it, but how do you keep a show like this fresh? I think there are ways CGI of doing dog. it. Turn, turn, turn classic villain into CGI dog. That's how you do it. But it didn't please the old fans. No. I doubt it pleased new fans. So <laughs> who who was his final four? I watched Pyramids of Mars yesterday. Mm. And I generally That's feel like I generally feel like I didn't have to. No. I mean they did show like archived footage, which I thought was fine. Like yeah. it's it's a way to catch the audience Makes up. Makes sense. Because I don't want to watch the tales. You know how in this new edit of Pyramids Mods they changed the, the time vortex to be like the new time vortex in the mm, background. I did notice that, and so they obviously did that because they wanted to use that in this episode. So I kind of like that. That was a neat little connect the dots thing. But they do that on the Blu-rays, don't they? They update the CG or the effects. Yeah, usually they do. If for you one haven't, story. they have an option. Oh, yeah. they just do it for one story. One story, yeah, a box set. They did it for horror fan rock. They did, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, the ending just didn't work for me. Do you um, think? Do you think Kate and Ibrahim's gonna fucking smash, mate? Do you think they're gonna go at it? I hope so. I don't really care. Russell's really trying to bring human humanity to Kate at the moment. Hey? <laughs> so fun. One of the comments you did make made me laugh was like the unit spit off, and they all just walked out to the oh, yeah. to the hangar and went like, yeah, dun 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 dun. dun. Our work here is done. Dun 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 dun. For dun. now. Dun-dun. <laughs> Dun-dun. Black. 
Unit will return in yeah, unit. unit. Will, Kate Stewart will return unit, in the unit, unit spin-off. Mysteries investigated. How silly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they'll bring the unit theme from Big Finish? Surely. That was a sick theme, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> what do you think of Rose this episode? Um, she went... <laughs> what was her one line? It was like... It was a question. What happened to her? I don't know. It was literally like three or four words, I think. So silly. Also, like, but even like Morris had nothing to do. He ate pizza. But (laughs) at least. That's such a funny. (laughs) At least he ate pizza. Um, No, but at least like Morris had a bit to do last week. And so it it makes sense. Yeah. They all had nothing to do. But yeah, it's like they all walk out like, oh, we saved the day. Didn't do shit. He just died instantly. All he did was die, you fucking idiots. Kidding. They had no choice in dying. I, do I mean, like, I wouldn't have died. I, I would have run away. Yeah. Because I'm smart. Try to run away from the sand. Yeah, I just keep running. Isn't that what everyone did in London and they all died? Running, running, and running, running, and running, running. No, I, I just, pace? I'd get on a plane. I'd hijack a plane and just fly away from the sand. What is this fucking GDA? Yeah, it's that easy. I'll Los, just, Los I'll drive my car airport. over the dump ramp into the <laughs> airport. That's such a that's such a great like I, I hang out in that airport all the time. So fun, mate, in real life. Just yeah. fuck around. I keep looking at that dumpster yeah, I, in real life and I'm like, I, I could keep jump going out. to LAX in real life. Yeah, a Mike, place I've ne- You've never been to LA, have you? No, I'd love to though. Interesting. I could jump that fence. I could get that plane over there with the door open. If only life is like a GTA. What's it called? An RPG? A role yeah. playing game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh okay. Uh Ending's good. Yeah, mummy 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 Sunday. Oh well, no! She well, no. Be. Oh, what do you Scarlet think of? Sunday. She was pointing at Ruby Road. She was. Na- I think that's so silly. That was literally. Oh, I've just put this together. It was the exact same feeling and vibe of, and it was a TARDIS all along. Where like the it shed. turns to a TARDIS, the the Ruby Road sign just glitches on to the street lamp. Goodness gracious me! And I, I just Ruby's mum doesn't know people are watching it. Why would she point? And for like 10 seconds. Big yes, like that's just dumb, convenient. But also like the big thing for me, the whole Ruby's mum or the cloaked woman always walks like an ominous cloaked figure, like with head down. The crying was always really exaggerated. Like I don't believe that there was actually a person under that hood. Mm. (laughs) And now the fact that it was a 15 year old girl, very tall 15 year old girl as that well. That doesn't make any sense. They literally had the body of like, just just the pure like shape of an adult. Yeah, it, yeah it's silly. Uh, but yeah, the Ruby's on twist is is, is lovely. I yeah, love it's, that. I, I'm glad it's just a normal person. Do you think they'll do anything with her father? Maybe we'll see her father. <laughs> what? What do you think her dad's like the brigadier or something? I don't know. Like <laughs> She's Kate's sister. <laughs> they called him William. Do we, do we know any Williams in the William Roger who? App William. Roger App William. Oh, Ruby's dad is Roger App William. William, yeah. That's my middle name. Ruby's mom has it's got, got it going, going on. on. We Silly. thought she was going to be Susan Triad's mommy. But she wasn't. Was oh, I thought person. it was so dumb as well. It was like, Want a job? Like, how many fucking jobs is Kate giving out these days? It's like... She's giving one to Ruby. No, she's giving one to Susan Triad. It's like... Oh, right. Susan Triad's like... She's meant to be this, like, Elon Musk figure. Why the fuck would she want to do a job at Unit? Don't know. Don't know. Don't care. Don't know, man. Um, the ending didn't really work for me either. Like, it, like just, just the final scene with Mrs. Flood. I assume she's an oh, angel. Yeah. Um, I think it just looked stupid and silly. And I think it was just a, it was a dumb way to end the episode. But was that shit? It was like, and the doctor, it ends terribly. I think she might be playing a character, perhaps called the White Guardian. Um, the Watcher. The White Guardian is what I said. Okay. Uh, We're the guardians of the freaking galaxy. <laughs> but yeah, I I thought I could have done without that at the end. Like we don't have to keep fucking. I'm kind of over these fourth wall breaks. I don't mind it for a bit of fun every now and then, but now it's like every episode, and it's just it's, it's um, just getting cringe. I think it's it's giving Martha in uh, <laughs> Journey's giving End. Martha like, in Journey's End. <laughs> I guess like I guess we're supposed to care that she's like an angel, but I guess like again like every 
twist so far or like reveal from this new era it's like everyone's already guessed it like mm. people guessed that she was like an angel mm. if there's evil gods there's gonna be like you know every, every there's always two sides to a coin basically mm. like there's also gonna be angels mm. um and i'm loving angels instead I'm loving angels and snakes. That's how I felt ending the episode. It's just kind of silly. It's like the dot. It's like it's just like and tune in next season when the doctor is gonna die. And it's like, well, he's not. What do you think? Uh, do you think they're playing a the long game with Susan Foreman? Do you think it's gonna be like the doc, like shoot his last scene? He like goes up to I, Caroline Ford. I, I, I kind of hate this idea of like, oh. Uh, we didn't see her this series, but you might next time. It's like, stop dangling this fucking carrot in front of me. I'm getting pissed off. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't it. have the patience for this anymore. I'm getting old. I'm just um, glad, I'm glad we have a bit of trajectory. Like, a, the, like I, I feel like I know where we're going with this now, which I, I think all season I've just been like, where are we going with this? <laughs> like, the, there's good emotion there. He's He knows now that he's going to face his, his, he wants to be more family oriented and look for his family. By the way, though, you know how I said that line? I was a bit like bullshit about the whole, you've taught me about family or whatever. Mm. Wasn't that also the point of the 14th Doctor? That's literally what I was about to say. I'm like, I don't, I genuinely don't feel like this Doctor has grown since, no. she, since the giggle. Like, no. I don't, maybe because I was like a silly kid with peanut butter jelly fingers watching Matt Smith and David Tennant and Christopher Eccleston and Peter Capaldi, but like, I felt like, maybe I'm nuts, but I felt like I understood their doctors. Mm. Since Jodie onwards, I felt, I feel like I don't, and I thought Jodie was maybe just like, maybe just a coincidence that I didn't understand her mm. doctor. But like 14 is meant to be 10, but also, oh, do I do this now? And mm. it's like, I don't uh, mind 14. Kind of cringe. I buy 14. But 15, yeah, but we already have, we already have a sentimental attachment yeah, to the 10th yeah, doctor. Yeah, it's right. kind of cheating. Um, with 15, um, I really don't, we're a series in now and I really don't understand yeah, I don't know. his character at all. Um, and uh, I I really hate how much he's like crying and shit. It just, mm. I don't feel this emotion at all. Yeah. Um, and, I, and we should, particularly in an episode like this. Um this goes down in, in a series of many actors who have been wasted. Mm. And I think this is one of the biggest. Well, who knows? Like, I remember ways. back in the day, we used to always be like, oh, Capaldi had bad writing. He got blah, blah, blah. Like, he, he deserved did. better. Which I think, to an extent, that's his right. His era kind of sucks. I think his individual episodes suck, but, like, his trajectory as a doctor, I quite like. Even yeah. even people talk I about how Series Nine's different. Like, he's a different, he's a weird doctor in it. I yeah. kind of think it flows. I think it's got a nice trajectory. Yeah, there. he almost takes himself less seriously. But that's a story for another time. Um, yeah so but um, so maybe my point being maybe in like five years time we'll be like we'll find that renaissance i think era. what scares me though i guess as a final comment is like series two like they didn't have there is no um the all like the general public didn't get to watch series one and have their say on it before they did series two mm. so i feel like series we won't see any really big changes until well, series three i quite like that yeah, I, you want I, this again? No, but <laughs> I don't like when um, writers change their vision based on what the fans want. No, 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 like, no, I, no. I, I quite like the fact that season two is locked away and if it's really good, then that's because Russell actually did a, a really good job with it. It wasn't him pandering to what fans wanted. Um, I actually think Russell, uh, I think Chibnall didn't change his plans. No, he did. No, I, I think that was always his plans, how Chibnall did his series. And, and I really like that. Allow me to rephrase. I, yes. I more mean like, um, I'm not saying they should due, due to the fans. I, I more just mean like maybe some productive criticism here and there. Mm. That's all. I think I think it's it's a God-given right as a showrunner to do the story that you want to do. And I've always yeah. said that even through... Um, with with Chris Chibnall when I didn't agree with what he was doing I always said that I think but I do respect the fact that it's what he story, the story that he wanted to tell and the same goes for Russell um, I, I suppose maybe yeah. your, your point is sort of like there's no because I already got season 2 there's no chance for a producer going up to Russell and being like hey Ross maybe mm. just hear me out mm. maybe we don't have the doctor cry this week do you know that's <laughs> you what I mean, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure um I, I, I'm always optimistic for the future with the show and I'm always um, I'm always going to watch it obviously mm. um, 
You sound pretty down. I thought you liked this episode early on, you said. Man, I'm telling you, I went jello brain. You went jello? I went pudding brain. Right, okay. As uh, 12 would say. Do you think this will go up or down on rewatch? Because you were sort of... I feel like this is similar to last week where you said you, you quite liked the episode. Then we got into talking about it. You said it was shit when we were talking about it. And then you went home and rewatched it and you're like, I'm vibing. I think I think it's just like, it's just, it's 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 a piece of media, you know? Yes. It's um I'm sat with my buddy and I'm 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 drinking coffee and um we're watching Doctor Who. Like it's there's always gonna be a part of me that feels happy about the fact I'm watching Doctor Who. Sure. You know. Um and yeah, I did enjoy part one. I think part one was definitely a lot better. Mm. And I think I watched it again last night. Well bits of bit. It was kinda of just on in the background. And I think it's fun. I think it's like a bit of a faster pace episode. Mm-hmm. Um but if we're giving it all together a rate and I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a six. Yeah, I. Uh, it might go up to a six point five. I don't know. I'll give it a rewatch, but I'm again, gonna, there's nothing. There's not. I don't really have any need to rewatch. I feel like it's just like, eh. it's like, yeah. I am gonna give it a six, and I think it's a very generous six because mm. I think I think a lot of the six de- comes down to last week, and particularly the ending. I think this gets like two bonus points for the ending. So, had it not been for that ending, I think this could have been in the red zone. You know. I think what I need right now is um, obviously we're still going to do the show, but um, I the think show's, we're canceling the pod. No, I just I just think I need a break from this era. Like, yeah, sure. I don't. It's kind of exhausted me. Well, it's been a lot, like you know, getting up every day, every it's Saturday, getting up and then doing the live streams on Friday, and then mm. doing the pre-pods on Monday, and also just like being so involved in just like I've read so many comments from people mm. and it can just be overwhelming. Mm. And I think I just need a little bit of a time off. And I think I'm looking forward to a Stephen Moffat Christmas special. Yes. Like yes. the same day that New Wars and Gromit and Gavin and Stacey drops. Like I'm going to be eating good. Well, and um, then we'll see how we feel about series two next year. Fuck. Got a, got a bit of a wait, don't we? Uh, yeah. Oh, well <laughs> on the bright side, next episode, as you said, George the world pe- penned by Stephen Moffat. Yep. Uh, great writer. My favorite. It might be his last ever script. It's his 50th episode. So uh, he might and also, uh, Moffat's, Moffat has a 100% hit ratio in writing for Shudy Gatwa. Yes, he does. So <laughs> we're good. Will he keep the uh, perfect streak going? Stay tuned in December uh, to find out. We'll see you on Christmas. Um, fuck me, sorry. We'll see you on Christmas, um, Boxing Day, I suppose. That's right. Uh, folks. And until then, you won't see us. Yeah, we're done. No, um, we'll be back uh, next week. We are going to do, I'm not sure if we're back on Monday. I'm not sure what the schedule is, but mm. next episode of the pod, uh, we will be doing our season wrap up pod. Um, so we're going to look through the entire series. We'll do a total fi- complete series score. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll sort of walk through the highs, lows, because whilst I think this series definitely has petered out in a quite messy and just hollow ending, I think there has been some big highs in there. Y'all know I'm going to say 73 yards. Love that oh, shit. It's, it's beautiful. I'm so glad we have it. And I, I don't think this episode fucked with it enough to like tamper yes, it. Like it was sort God. of just references. So that was good. Thank God. I was so worried about that. Yeah. Uh, they might do that in season two. Anyways. Oh, we- oh, oh no. You've just, you just given me that four. <laughs> now I have anxiety for the next year. <laughs> you bastard. You actual, uh, actual Oh, so I hope that you had a good night watching the episode or a good morning. Oh yeah, if anyone went to the cinema, please let us know. Yeah, what was I think at IMAX what was experience? I think like? at IMAX they had an exclusive introduction to it, so that could be cool. Let us know what that Imagine was about. Paying twenty bucks to go see that. Yeah, just sitting like <laughs> I just it sort of didn't warrant it. If I was in gold class, I'd be like down in beers. Yeah, another I'd beer bucket, this. please. It sort of, it just I hate to say no. it, it's it just. It just didn't really earn it. Didn't have like the scale or the emotion of like no, a, a like, big I, like, cinema I know finale. I know Day was like a 50th anniversary special, but yeah. like just the seeing that in the field, just the vibe was so great. Hey. That womb behind me going, this better be good. Do you know what earned, earned a cinema showing more than this? What? And we went to watch the pilot in the cinema. That was so weird. Why was that in the cinema? Money. Same reason this is in the theater. Correct answer. That was um, so weird. It was. But yeah, bottom line, uh, <laughs> I hope some people like the episode. Maybe you didn't, but don't worry, guys. There's still another season to go before the show gets cancelled. And uh, that's <laughs> al- that's also a joke, guys. It actually generally might. Yes. Yeah. I don't, think I don't mean cat. I mean, uh, allow me to rephrase. Um, not get another Disney series. I think it will. I think we'll get season three at Disney. 
least. I think wrong. I, I the, hope it's. I hope you're right. Why are you doing? I'm stretching my leg. You're quite um, flexible. It doesn't feel like it right now. Oh, what is my life? It's got had some humor to this. What am I doing in, in in what am I doing in my life? I mean, I'm talking about Doctor Who. I'm watching you stretch. Do you ever sit there? Do you ever want to pull like a hammy or something? Um, I just think it would be fun. And I'm about to pull this girl like a hammy, hammy. Who said that? Bum, Who bum, sung bum, that? Posty. All right. Um, well, I just think like a sport injury without playing sport would be quite funny. Like, oh, I, I did my hammy on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Is it the ACL? They always break. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. one of the things they break. Yeah. Anyways, uh, the mic fell on my ACL. <laughs> I uh, I cramped doing the pod. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We'll be back next yeah. week, folks. Uh, thanks so much for doing this journey with us. Uh, any new listeners, welcome aboard. Um, it's been great to have a pretty consistent audience. Welcome so. aboard the TARDIS. Remember <laughs> your friend where the first episode he watched it, it was like, welcome aboard the TARDIS. No. That's the 50% Doctor Who podcast. One of my friends listened to one episode of the pod back in the day years ago. Welcome aboard. I think it was the older iteration as well before 2020. Yep. And uh, I started it by saying, welcome aboard the TARDIS. <laughs> and uh, one of my friends listened to it and bullied me a lot. And I still think, I still think <laughs> that's what are, the, what are you the official Doctor Who podcast? I think he still thinks that that's how we start the show. Welcome aboard the TARDIS. He's like, How's the pod going? I'm like, great. And he's great. like, Are you still, you still aboard the TARDIS? Do you, yeah, do you still go? Welcome <laughs> aboard the TARDIS. Sushak's not anymore though. No, he's gone. <laughs> Got to lift hey. off his ego. Hey. Hey. It's Aiden hey, and Connor's podcast. Hey, hey, we're, we're doing Doctor Who reviews on a Saturday. Doing Doctor Who reviews. I hate that whenever I do a negative review, I just sit here fearing the comment section. Oh, I don't really care anymore. Yeah, I feel like this has been a lesson we've grown this year. You grow from it because I I've already, I don't think anything can get worse than the dot and bubble one. No, I feel like I'm harder, faster, stronger. Yeah, because that, don't that, get that get at least me. at least last <laughs> I can't yeah, at least last week like people didn't like it. Mm. A lot of people didn't like it. If I like dot and bubble, one was like, no, you're wrong. We all love it, and you're not in our club. Did, you can't sit with us. Did, yeah, we were on the loser table. Yeah, the did loser you, table. Um, that reminds me of my uh, school life. Did you see audience reactions online at all? Was there much? Um, not really. I think no, not really. Yeah, it's I'd been surprisingly quiet. They're probably all in the fucking theater watching all these dumbass like bonus features. They're all probably just crying, heads yeah. in their hands. Yeah.